When I think about one of the easiest ways to sync a video game, this is a common design trap that a lot of the developers have made. Unfortunately, it's been a part of even some of my most favorite games as of late. So for today's Critical Thought, we're going to be discussing one of the most surefire ways to sync a game and one of the best ways to save it. And that is, how do you approach making a good intro slash start to your game. When we talk about kind of the consumer's expectations or their willingness to play a game, there is a very small window in terms of how long do you have to get somebody interested and invest enough in your title to keep playing it. In the past, we've spoken about how mobile games try to get somebody to spend money within the first two weeks of purchase. Because if you can get somebody hooked that early on, they're going to want to stay around. But when it comes to traditional or retail-based games, that window is a little bit different. And before anyone says it, we're not talking about two hours. It is actually far quicker than that. For most people who buy a video game, they will know probably within 60 minutes whether or not your game is worth continuing to play or refund it. Some people, 15 to 30 minutes. And for some people still, it could be 30 seconds. And that is unfortunately not hyperbole. There, I've seen when I do my Completion Critique show that there are games where Within five minutes of playing, people have stopped. Sometimes within 20 seconds of playing, that if the, the achievement is just start level one, you may have like one to two percent of your player base that didn't even bother to do that. But whatever the case may be, the intro of your game is one of the most important aspects. And it's up there when we talk about marketing in terms of success. As we've said on plenty of our shows and casts, marketing and good PR is going to get people to check out your game. Good UI, UX design, and just designing a great game is going to keep them playing it and keep them from refunding it. But when I look at a lot of the games I've been enjoying lately, or the ones I've been putting some time into, they've all have had very noticeable churn within that first hour, and sometimes even within that first 30 minutes of play. I'm talking about going from 100 to 70, or in some cases going from 100 to 95 to 43. And again, that is within an hour. And that is something you do not want to see in your game. Because it means something is not clicking with people when it comes to the introduction. And even if your game is amazing, even if it is this fantastic, never-before-seen title that the people who have finished your game decry it as one of the best games of all time, doesn't matter if 80% of the people who bought your game stopped before they even got within 60 minutes of play. And it's something that I've been thinking about with the games I've been playing from Project Moon, Lobotomy, Corpor excuse me, Lobotomy Corporation, not easy to say fast, and Lobby Aruna. They're both very unique and original games, and they both have had massive churn. Now, Lobotomy Corporation doesn't have achievement, so I can't track it that way, but Why We're Runa, within 40 minutes, I think lost about 50 to 55% of its player base. Now, it does have a higher than normal kind of progress rate, or people who got to one of the game's endings. So what that tells us is that while this game, and this is not the only example of this, there are other games like this, but while this game has some great design, the people who have stuck with it continue to play because they enjoy it, something in that intro is not working. And this is where a lot of developers, again, struggle when it comes to designing their game. And why the introduction is so important, and why many AAA developers really spend a lot of their time, money, and effort making sure that first hour is as, as bombastic, as easy to get into, as, as approachable 
to get into as possible. Because games are going to have pain points. It's just kind of part of how you design it, and it's rare to see a game that is completely pain point free. But the sooner or the earlier that pain points are in an experience, the worse it's going to be in terms of retention and approachability. If your game has a difficulty spike 50 to 70 hours in, people will most likely push through that because they've already invested that time. If your game is pissing people off within two minutes of playing, guess what? They can refund your game and you'll never see them again. And this is why one of the things that has been discussed when it comes to game dev is that the first level of your game should be the last one design. Because you want that introduction to be as foolproof, as fantastic as you can reasonably make it. But the problem, as we know, is that a lot of games these days are not designed around stages. Open world titles, story-driven games, games that don't really fall into any neat genre, or any like very compact kind of design like that, such as a roguelike. So the question, and this is something I've been struggling with, how do you design a good intro, and what is a good intro to a video game? And that is a tough, that's a harder question to answer than it may seem. Because every genre, every design is different. So trying to establish, okay, just do this, 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 and you're all done, doesn't necessarily work if we're trying to compare, I don't know, Resident Evil to Slay the Spire to Super Mario to World of Warcraft. And then let's just throw Stellaris in there as well, because Stellaris is an easy to learn game. But from a development standpoint, you need to be approaching the first hour, even beyond, or even shorter than that, the first 30 minutes of your game with a fine tooth comb. And this is again why we talk about the virtues of playtesting and listening to consumer feedback. Again, if somebody is confused about the introduction of your game or a basic mechanic of how your game works, that is a red flag. Now, of course, again, you'll have people complain about issues further in your game, but that first hour needs to be perfect. I played another game lately where the game introduces a mechanic and a tool that you're supposed to use within that first hour, and there's no tutorial prompts about it. There's like one little bit of lore dump, but that's it. And not only did I get stuck at this part, but there were people on the forums complaining that they had no idea what to do. And if somebody is having issues again within that short span of time, that is a huge issue for your game. And you need to be able to understand and make sure that that first hour, first level, whatever, needs to be as not only idiot proof as possible but it needs to be as polished as possible even if you know worst case scenario if you have to decide between refining and playtesting the final level of your game versus refining and playtesting the first level of your game you want that first level to get as much time and attention as you can now ideally you want to give your entire game the highest amount of polish and refinement as you can. But as we've said before, the start of your game, the first 30 to 60 minutes, is crucial. And when you fail in this regard, this is what leads to a lot of churn. Now, in terms of what goes in to that first 30 minutes into that first hour, we're going to talk about that next. Because even though every genre is different, there are some points that you can certainly hit on that are universal. But before we get to that, we're going to take a quick break. And if you're interested in my books on design, then check these out. For entry-level students, we have 20 Essential Games to Study, and then the Game Design Deep Dive series that takes an extensive look at different genres with free-to-play coming in 2022. Creating a good intro for your game takes 
a lot about understanding the onboarding and just the mechanics of your title. In terms of length, it needs to be long enough to get all the mechanics across, but still short enough that it doesn't become a chore. So it has to be quicker on the uh, long side or longer on the short side. So I guess that would be considered safely extreme. The problem, as we've said, is that the more complicated your game is, the more elements that need to be introduced. So what could fit for like a minute and a half intro in a platformer or a quick kind of just Cliff's Nose version for an action game doesn't necessarily work if you're trying to do something more advanced, such as in a Factorio, Kerbal Space Program, RPG, strategy games, and so on. And when you're trying to work your way through the beginning of your game, you want to look at a few key points. First, what is your core gameplay loop? I know this sounds very simple, but the intro needs to represent the core gameplay of your title in the best possible light. You do not want to create an intro that has absolutely nothing to do with the main game. And I know some of you might right now may be thinking that I'm joking about that. Who would do such a thing? But we've seen titles, and my mind is unfortunately blanking on me as I'm recording this point, but we've seen games where what you do in the intro slash tutorial has nothing or very little about what the actual core gameplay of your game is. This is what we've talked about before when we joked the real Dark Souls begins. That you play the game, you do the whole intro, and then as soon as you leave it, not only did none of that actually matter, but it's not even the actual gameplay that's going to be there. Maybe a new system gets introduced, maybe new rules get added. And while that can help or that can matter for thematic purposes, you don't want to be, you know, pulling the wool over the player's eyes for your start. And if you are going to try and do something like that, then you need to make sure that it is as quick and as painless as possible. So... One of the games I wanted to show, this is from Unsighted that we played on stream, and I really like this game. So this is another case where the intro and the main gameplay loop don't necessarily mesh well. The first 30 minutes of this game, and this is what we saw in the demo, is very much like a, uh, like a hyperlight game. A drifter or Zelda-ish kind of game. It's very linear. You're getting some upgrades, push through to the boss, and then you get to kind of the main story beat. But when you leave that story beat, what you then discover is that the game is really an open-world Metroidvania with a real-time countdown that affects how characters live, behave, and die. And I am sure that, A, there are people who played on site who quit before they saw that. And, B, there's people who got to that point, saw it, and then said, no, and they refunded and uninstalled the game. And this is why you need to be very attentive about what is going on in the opening of your title. I should be able to walk away from your intro and know very early on, or even by the end of it, is this game for me, yes slash no. One of the best examples of an introduction would be from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, that their quote unquote tutorial island is just literally a scaled down version of the rest of the core gameplay of the main title. In that tutorial section, you are going to learn how to do gliding. You're going to learn how to cook food. You're going to learn about the weather effects, all of Link's powers. You're going to get upgrades. You're going to fight. It is, again, everything that you're going to do in the main game, but condensed. 
in a way, Nintendo could have just taken the entire tutorial island and, you know, put that as, you know, Breath of the Wild prologue and have that as a separate uh, download for Switch for people who wanted to see what the game is all about. And we did a video about prologues in the past, and the prologue is also another example of your introduction. By the end of it, I need to know what this gameplay is going to be about. And while we're talking about gameplay mechanics, this is where you want to spell things out for the player. Again, if I leave your introduction or your starting area or whatever, and I don't understand how a mechanic or an item or anything like that works, then that is a failure of your onboarding. And poor onboarding is another example of a bad intro to your game. And like I said in the last part, if you're looking at your forms and there are people who are confused about bread and butter elements of your game, if they are confused within five minutes of starting your title about what to do or how to proceed, you need to rework that tutorial. Now, another thing about your intro and this is something that I think can cause some clashing. How much story do you put into it? As in, do we lead off with 40 minutes of walking around or a 20 minute cutscene or if it was Death Stranding's case, you know, 10 hours of build up there. And this is where, again, for a lot of developers, you're going to have some pushback. If your game is story driven or if you're trying to put the story as the forefront, you still need to get the gameplay across. We played another game lately for our Wednesday night streams. I think it was Industria. And this is a game that the first 30 to 40 minutes, maybe the first hour that we played of it on stream, nothing was happening. There was no gameplay. You walked around. You picked up an item and you interacted with it. By the end of that first area, I still had no idea what the core gameplay of this game was going to be. Is it going to be a survival aspect? Is this going to be more first-person shooter heavy combat? Is it going to be narrative-driven, puzzle-driven? Nobody who was watching the game as we played through it on stream had any idea. And that is a problem. If you're going to do story, you need to properly pace it out. 40 minutes of introduction story is way too long. For one thing, the player still doesn't know what the gameplay loop is. So they're not really thinking about your story at this point. And as for bonus points, don't make your intro cumbersome. Such as, hey, we're going to let you do all kinds of free running and gymnastics and crazy agility moves. But you're going to spend the first 20 minutes just walking slowly from point A to point B to get to that section. There is a kind of art to simplicity when it comes to having a good intro. It's why the punchiness of Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal worked so well. Doom 2016... Your entire, you know, narration intro can be summed up with rip and tear until it's done. And then you start killing and getting your shotgun. And here's a fun fact. Even with how great the opening of Doom 2016 was, it still lost, I think, about 20% of the player base before they finished the first level. So even a game like that can still fail in terms of getting people invested in it. And again, without being able to talk to people directly, there's no way of knowing what stopped them. And this is why you have to do playtesting. You need to understand what is repelling people. And like I said in the last part, your game can have issues you know, 30, 50, 70, 80 hours in, that can become pain points. But most people at that point, they are invested. They want to see the game all the way through. 
But if your game has pain points in the first 10 minutes, you are, and I can guarantee you, churning your potential consumer base because of it. And a lot of people, and I've seen this on forums of very challenging games, will sneer or they'll insult they make fun of people who want a more spelled out intro. They want more onboarding. They need some more guidance. And as a developer, you need to pay attention to this. Because again, your hardcore fans are some of the worst people to talk to when it comes to how great your game is or good or bad it is at onboarding. Because just like you, they have internalized everything about your game. They know the ins and outs. Nothing is going to really stop them. But for a new person, if they are bouncing off within five minutes because they don't understand what is going on, you need to rework that intro. Now, in terms of how long it needs to be, like we've said, you need to get all the points of your core gameplay loop across. And this is why we said in the last part that the intro is very malleable in terms of time. One game could get this all done in three minutes. Another game, it could take an hour or two. It could take more than that. But you don't want to pad out your intro. And we've seen games that will do this, that you're trying to learn, but every tutorial lesson, we need to watch a five to 10 minute cutscene. Then we do two minutes of gameplay, then another five to 10 minute cutscene. And we repeat this, until the game basically just says, okay, you've learned everything, now just do whatever you want in it. And when you cut the player loose, you need to make sure that they got everything they need. And this definitely leads heavily into onboarding and UI UX that is beyond kind of our video, especially I think since it's already starting to run a little bit on the longer side. But if your intro is good enough people are going to keep playing your game and again anything that begins to slow things down you want to get rid of or move it further back again you don't want to start a gameplay heavy title with 40 minutes of dialogue and no interaction if you need to introduce a player to the story Make it quick and snappy because you don't want to be sending the player mixed messages. As in, I need to pay attention to all these story beats, but at the same time, I don't know what the hell I'm doing in this game. And if you're trying to marry the two, you want to err on the side of gameplay because nobody is going to care about your story if they're confused about what your inventory screen looks like, or how to pick up a weapon, or how to solve a puzzle. And once they've made it past that point, you can then start to push more of the storytelling into it. A masterclass would be something like Portal. That Portal from the get-go, the story is there, it's present. But it's not in your face. It is on the outskirts of the gameplay. But as you're playing the gameplay and you're solving the puzzles and you're figuring out the portal gun, you can tell something is not right. Something is going on around you. And that adds to that mystique. Imagine if Portal just started with a 20-minute PowerPoint of GLaDOS explaining to you all the crazy things you can do with a Portal gun. Most people would probably just quit the game or fall asleep at their computer while they're listening to this. But you want your intro to do as much combination of story and gameplay as you can. Not If you have to do one or the other, you want to focus on gameplay. Because for another thing, if you design your tutorial, your introduction well enough, you could turn this into a standalone section, something that somebody can revisit 
If they are completely confused, let's say they come back to a game after six months, a year, two years, and they want to kind of get back into things, but they don't want to completely erase their file. Having your introduction kind of be standalone or be designed that it can be played at any time can also greatly improve the onboarding of your title. So to wrap things up, the intro of your game is an essential point. Whether it is a minute long, an hour long, it doesn't matter. But you need to make sure that the player gets everything they can out of it in terms of what the gameplay is, what's going into the plot, and what's going to push them forward. If it doesn't work, even if your game is fantastic, you're going to be leaving consumers and potential long-term fans behind. Like I said earlier, when it comes to Lobotomy Corporation and La Ruina, they're both very unique and original games who suffer in terms of their intro and onboarding. La Ruina does what I just said you don't do. It starts with, I think, like a 10 to 15 minute uh, cutscene of just two characters talking. Then you're hit with a lot of UI boxes and reading of a tutorial. You then spend about a minute or two of actual gameplay. And then it's back to another 5 to 10 minutes of dialogue and cutscenes. And for the people who stuck with it, they played this game very far. But like I said, if your game completely churns people 30 minutes in out of a 50 to 100 hour long experience, then your game is really just 30 minutes long. And this is how a lot of games end up with very niche fan bases who then struggle when trying to appeal to a wider market because they're not thinking about the new player perspective. They're not thinking about what does it mean to turn on this game for the very first time and start learning it. And as we've said, the best teacher it, when it comes to this is playtesting. Getting people who have not played your game, who have not been following it for months and years, or who 100% your last game. Get somebody new to sit down and just watch or have them record themselves play it and just see what it's like from that new person perspective of what your game looks like. Because they're not going to care about your pedigree. They're not going to care about your amazing 50 hour in twist to your story and to your gameplay. They just want to see what this title is all about. And this is why, again, AAA developers spend so much attention on having a good intro. The Mario games will often give you that kind of test bed at the start to let you really play around with Mario. Now again, the Mario games aren't really known for having 80 minute long cutscenes, but you're going to figure out very quickly whether or not you're going to enjoy a Mario game. And that is only the answer for when we talk about a good intro. How fast can somebody figure out whether or not they like your game? And again, in order to figure that out, they need to understand what your game is going to be about. What is going to be this core gameplay? What is going to be the moment to moment of how this game is going to work? And how is that going to grow 20 minutes, an hour, 10 hours, 30 hours, 100 hours in? Because if the player can't see that or if they can't understand it, they're not going to stick around to find the fun. So with that said, thank you so much for watching. If you're new, be sure to do all the liking and subscribing. Check out our Discord and Patreon link down below. And come back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where is in the art and science of games. Until next time, take care.